This is my Precision Matthews model PM1130MV lathe that I bought about six months ago. This replaces a smaller uh, little machine shop lathe that I've previously used in my shop. In this video I'll be machining some Delrin spacers for use on the AccuSlice system. The spacer are used to mount the magazine clamps to the AccuSlice index table. In the past year I've actually bought two machines from my shop. Um, normally a woodworker, I've done very little machining, but I am learning. But I bought both uh, this lathe, this is a Precision Matthews Model 1130 lathe, and I also bought a Precision Matthews Model MV 30 mill. And I did a series on converting that mill for CNC operation, again to make it more useful for my shop. But I purchased these systems for two reasons. Number one, I do a lot of parts for the AccuSlice system. In the past, I farmed these out. And everything for the AccuSlice system is machined in the United States. So it can be expensive for two reasons. Number one, my lots tend to be very small. And when you do small lots of machining, the costs go up significantly. Also, the lead time can be you know, eight to 10 weeks. So you have to plan ahead and stock a lot of inventory ahead just to uh, make sure you have parts in stock all the time. You know, the AccuSlice system has like 75 parts. About 30 of those parts are actually machined. And I have to plan ahead to make sure I have inventory at all times to maintain those uh, parts so I can assemble systems. And for example, this part here, I just ran out of like two days ago. So I'll be making parts today, and tomorrow I'll be able to start reassembling systems again. Again, fast turnaround. The other reason I bought these uh, two systems is to machine parts for my new automated AccuSlice system that I'm working on. I'm doing a series of videos on this, uh, machining these parts. And by having this capacity in-house to do my own machining, I can machine the parts quickly. I can do re modifications of it, redesign, and just quick turnaround and low cost uh, for machining those parts. If I had to outsource those parts, it'd be very expensive and the time delay would be significant. So it's just faster to do it in-house. So that's the two reasons I purchased these, this machine is one to make parts for the AccuSlice system and the second is to develop, do development on the automated AccuSlice system. These are the Delrin spacers we'll be making in this video in order to mount the um, magjig clamps to our AccuSlice index table. And this is a complete assembled system over here, which consists of the magjig clamps and screws, these two spacers, and two plates. And in a previous video, you saw I made these two plates on our milling machine. And in this video, we'll be making these uh, Delrin spacers on the lathe. And the way this system operates is these screws are used to attach our spacers and then our first plate and this mounts on the AccuSlice system and this bottom plate has threaded holes in it and that screws the whole assembly together. But in this video we're making these Delrin spacers. So I'm machining these parts for the AccuSlice system. I'm starting out with a piece of Delrin. This Delrin is five foot long and from this bar I can get like 130 of these small pieces. In the past when I farmed these out, they cost like a dollar and a quarter a piece to have these machines. Actually there's like, there's like 10 cents of material in this part, the rest of that's all labor. But um, to be able to do it on my mill, it may be slower than using a, a different machine. Usually when it's done in a factory they use what's called a screw machine. We can spit these things out in, you know, in seconds. And it's going to take me about a minute a piece to machine these. But Again, my labor is less expensive than farming it out. These Delrin spacers we're making are actually quite simple. It's nothing more than a piece of, you know, 7 16th inch diameter Delrin rod cut to a length of 0.383 inches. And that length is the critical dimension. Then it has a hole through the center, which is designed for a number 8 uh, screw. So this is a setup I made for the operation. And I had to make a, a stop here. This is a stop to set the length of the, of the piece. And what I had to do here is I had to create a, a key that locks into this plate and then this L bracket uh, mounts on there and it has, it's adjustable so I can adjust the length of that. And the way this works is I have my Delrin rod going through my lathe chuck. I bring it up against that spacer, lock the chuck in place, I move this back out of the way slightly, then I have a drill to drill a hole through the center. That's my center hole, which I drill through the piece. After that, I back out the drill, and then I have a cutoff tool to cut the spacer to the right length. 
and then a final step is to deburr it. So it's actually four steps. Number one, setting the length of the spacer. Number two, drilling the hole. Three, cutting it off. And then the final manual step, just deburring the small pieces. So here's the actual steps. First of all, setting the length with the stop, moving the stop out of the way, drilling the hole through the center of the Delrin rod, pulling the drill back, using my cutoff tool to cut it to the exact length. And then finally deburring the two holes in the center of the Delrin spacer. And here's the finished spacer cut to the exact length, 0.383 inches. So now I have about 500 more of these to cut. So this is the uh, actual operation again, shown at a slightly different angle on the lathe. Well, I just finished making like 200 of these small spacers for the active slice system. A fairly simple project, just required four steps, some custom modification to my lathe, but a very simple project. And I'll be making more complex stuff in the future. Uh, I'm new to metal machining. I've been doing woodworking for more than 50 years, but uh, metal machining is new to me, so I'm learning as I go along here. So, so I'll be making more complex stuff uh, in the near future. But once again, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, you know, please give me a call or drop me an email. I'm always happy to hear from you.